In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the options that you can use with the sortable widget. And some of these are similar to the options that you can use with the draggable widget. So some of these will be familiar to you. The first thing we're going to check out is opacity. Yes, you can actually change the opacity when the user begins to sort on the element in question. So let's go ahead and save this and let's refresh our page. And you can see now the opacity is kicking in for whatever element that we currently are sorting on. So that's kind of a nice, useful option. Now there is also a distance option that you can set and let's set that to 150 pixels. And basically what this means is, is that sorting will not start until you have dragged a particular item for the distance that you specify right here. So in this case, you will not be able to actually drag this image until you've moved the mouse 150 pixels. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh our page and we'll see if this works. And yes, it did. I was actually unable to move this image until I had moved the mouse 150 pixels. So that's how that option works. Now we can also set a delay in terms of when the user is allowed to sort a particular element. So let's go ahead and set that. And we'll set this to 350 milliseconds. So let's see if it works. And it did. I was not able to drag that until 350 milliseconds had passed. Now you can also disable the sortable widget. And maybe you're making some changes to your website and you want to disable that functionality on a temporary basis. So you can go ahead and do that very quickly. So let's make sure it works. And it didn't. And the reason is I didn't type out the property all the way. I think it's disabled. Let's try that again. And now it works. I can't sort on any of the images now. So that's how the disabled option works. Now you can also specify a different cursor that you want to use when the user begins to sort on a particular element. So let's go ahead and use the move cursor. That's kind of a cool one to use. And in this instance, we have to use quotes. So you just put move here. So let's make sure this works. And it does. Take a look. I now get a move cursor over the image that I am trying to sort on. Now you can also use the containment property. And what that does is it prevents the user from moving a particular element out of the parent element. That's usually the value that I use here, parent. I think there's a couple others, but I always use the parent. So basically, when I save this, we should not be able to sort these images or even move the image outside of our parent div, which in this case is this little div class we have right here. That's actually the parents, not the main. And actually, I spelled containment wrong. Sorry about that. We got to get rid of the T. There we go. All right, so let's save this again. And let's go back here and I'll just move this over a little bit. Let's refresh our page. And there you can see, I cannot move this outside of that div. So the image is now restricted to its parent div element. So let's move on. Now you can also restrict the element to a particular axis. And in this case, we're going to do the X axis. So let's see if this works. And it does. I can only move the images now horizontally. I can't actually move these images up and down vertically. Now the final one, and I already have this typed out, so I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this right in here, is the grid property. And we use this with the draggable widget, and it's the same concept here. You'll actually get an invisible grid, which will sort of snap the images into place. So let's go ahead and make sure that works. And it does. See how I have that little invisible grid now? And these can just snap right into place. So that's how the grid property works. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.